Hi all and welcome back. Uh, we'll start our next session for the day, which is a open space with Agile Network India. Uh, Priyank Patak will be facilitating this. And before starting on to this session, I would like to thank our founding sponsor, Innovation Roots. It is a leading consulting and training service provider, helping organization to achieve business agility and beyond. It is one of the leaders and pioneers of niche publishing services and well known for content collaboration with global thought leaders, authors and creators. For more information, you may visit www.innovationroots.com. And I would also like to thank our sponsor, Jail, which is a product offering from Tata Consultancy Services Limited. It is a, a purely cloud-based enterprise agile planning tool along with DevOps capabilities. Enterprise can use Jail to adopt agile practices or scale across multiple Scrum and Kanban teams using enterprise scaling frameworks such as Safe, Discipline, Agile, Less, and more. You can try out Jail for free up to 20 users for 30 days by signing up at Jail.io or reach out to us for any inquiries or exclusive product demo. Check out the Jail page on Agile Network India website for more information. Here's a, here are some quick do, do's and don'ts for the participants. Join the event five minutes before the start time. Use high quality speakers or headphones for better sound quality. Questions will be taken via the chat box. I request all the participants to put their questions in the chat box. At the end of the session, the facilitator or the moderator will help and read out a few questions to the speaker as per the time available. Please uh, fill in the feedback forms after the event to help us understand more about the event management. So we and we appreciate your cooperation. So with this, we'll begin our session. Uh, welcome, Priyank. Yeah, thanks, Misha. So thank you for the introduction and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, we're gonna quickly jot down some ideas to begin with. So this do's and don'ts. <laughs> We initially thought when we created a Jail Network India online events, we thought like, you know, we really need some kind of a way to manage the flow. But over the time, we realized now that it, it is not essential. Like a lot of people are already aware about what they should do during a call or they should not. So maybe, maybe we can just um, run our cameras in this session if we like to. So I don't stop you to speak up. So let's do this. Uh, come on camera if you are available. And if not, that is also okay. But then at least speak up. <laughs> so we can actually jot down now. The first thing is in open space is it is generally an agendaless, uh, uh, you know, event or against a session. In online, it becomes a little tricky to manage, which is at least most of us have now mastered. So as you can hear me, the next five minutes, we will be thinking what are the top topics which you like to discuss, okay? What are the key topics you would like to discuss? So if you have some thoughts, maybe you can just unmute yourself and can speak about it, that we should talk about this topic. Or else if you think that you want to type it, you're welcome to type it in the chat box, either ways. Yeah, Prashant Vivadi, evidence-based management, and the future of agile, brilliant topic. So. Monica, why we use Sibaniki series for Agile? We're not linear or even odd. A very fantastic topic, Monica. So who wants to share their thoughts? I'll add in the last. So maybe you can unmute yourself. If you want to come on camera, you're welcome. We can take these three wonderful topics, one after other. And maybe we can start from uh, Prashant Gulwadi's uh, suggestion, like evidence-based management. To begin with, Prashant, over to you. What are your thoughts? Like, what is this context in your opinion? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is topic is my uh, one of my core uh, pet areas. You can say, based upon my background working on ISO 9001 CMM maturity. What you can measure, you can improve, is what we've been learned and ingrained in our minds. And agile, we're talking from 2001 officially with the manifest in place. But so far, because the way the culture is that people are talking story point estimation is different by different people. We still not coming to a particular common ring area to say this is the way we need to do something and measure something. So when we say evidence-based management, 
uh, if I talk for a value stream, right, the order to cash, and I want to bring agile transformation there, I still don't see people talking about these are the area of the customer, the feature was brought in, and this brought that definite change in more uh, sales happening or in more people using that product. So that type of, are we saying that we are skeptical because of IP issues or we are not gathering the data or we are not confident about? So that has been my constant uh, struggle. Hence, I put this topic here today. Thank you for sharing that uh, brilliant topic, uh, Prashant. So you, you have some more thoughts, like, you know, what kind of citations or what kind of ideas which we should try out or like if you have some small suggestions to start the conversation with, and then we'll request the others to step in and then add into that. Okay, with my limited experience on how I've been putting across, when we earlier did our uh, delivery in a waterfall or we process, we had intrinsic measures and extrinsic measures, internal as well as external, product quality, mm -hmm. service quality, and many of them were intangible. So if I do the same parallels here, the product is still the same, right? The product quality is not changed, you know, though we're doing agile. So if I develop a new feature and new capability, have I baseline the number of users hitting the website, ordering on Amazon, or buying being that, did I lose some customers? By bringing that uh, FD, some banks do not have, I don't want to name them, some banks have decided not to enable fixed deposit creation online for security purposes. Are they losing the customers or are they returning? It's a policy, right? So these type of examples, if I can bring in, I as an individual industry, not myself as Prashant Gulwadi, and talk about this where we are failing to bring agile because people are not saying, finally, mindset is something is intangible. But when I talk of the scoreboard in an IPL or cricket scoreboard, people get passionate about it. And a evidence-based management is what I'm always trying to explore in any uh, topic here. I understand now. Fantastic. So, so let me uh, step in then. <laughs> so evidence-based management, um, is not a new topic as Prashant already highlighted. It's kind of something which is very scientific way of managing, in my opinion. And uh, the very first thing which is I learned about software engineering very early in the career is is about how do you take a reference from the past, right? About whatever you do. So when you manage something, the first thing you do is you want to evaluate how it has been done or if similar things have been done in past and what are the data points you have from there and that becomes evidence for you to get started right and that becomes the input i would say not evidence actually input for you and then you want to actually collect the uh, data in terms of you know what empirically you are originating like if you have uh, run an iteration and then what was the outcome of it and then what was the resultant of that iteration, what you have done, what are the things which worked for you and et cetera. And then you collect those evidences. Most importantly, then you make a pattern. So when you incrementally do it, you make patterns, right? And then you see that, okay, this is the, this is the way it has to be done. This is happening. This is not working. And this is how it has to be done. Maybe or this is something which is redundant. This is not something which is coming again and again. It is very, very, uh, you know, very uh, important to identify outliers as well in that whole conversation of pattern analysis. So this is how a typical evidence-based management can be thoughtfully done to begin with. But then there are many things which you can talk, think about. Uh, one of the very uh, early of my career again <laughs> in Agile, I would say, I learned that that there are concepts which is which we frequently want to talk about, right? Like the feature released in a quarter or in a month or maybe in an iteration, right? And that feature release, how it has resulted in customer acquisition. And that is something which is very, very important to, uh, you know, go back into the planning. And then you want to plan based on that. What is the customer acquisition rate we have in terms of when we release a new feature? Are we losing customers? It's not just going to be always in positive side of it, but it could actually go in, in the other side of that as well, right? Like you might lose the customer, which are existing customer because of the complexities you have created or maybe the change you have created, not necessarily complexity. So uh, that is something which is, I personally feel is critical as well. You know, Sunday evening. Back to you again. 
Yeah, yeah it's a Sunday night like question. Looks like nobody is interested right now. Maybe we can take it up some some other time. Just falling. Yeah. So over to you, Prashant, and then I'll add just one liner in the end about how this whole concept has I have learned and what is the research available to refer to. So, to build on these ideas which you said, uh, Priyan, it's not easy because even earlier also when you measure something, right, customer satisfaction ratings are intangible, it's a feel, the experience. So most of these numbers, people are trying to bring a science through an art because software itself is an art. And this journey, I don't think we can solve in a 15 minute conversation that we are doing today. And we are exploring this as a probably if people are interested on the forum, I can invite them to make it as a COE if we can and build it for the community. Yeah, that's uh, so evidence based management can be also seen from perspectives where, like, you know, the economy. If you are a student of economics and you like to study that, you always want to collect the evidences, right? That's how you actually study data, basically. When I say evidence, I mean data points or data. So the the way uh, I learned Agile was, and the way it is taught today is two different things, right? So one of the things which is I learned was like, you know, eventually when you contribute as a team player, the things matter a lot to the enterprise success, right? So enterprise success, which contributes to the way we want to manage it, right? What is your business goals and eventually how do you want to proceed further? So I'm just trying to connect the first, uh, establish the first block here that enterprise success uh, is, is, uh, is one of the very critical construct, right? How enterprises want to think that they are successful. And when they have that clarity, they want to build what are the goals or the outcomes they want to target so that they can address that success or they can achieve that success. So with that two step process, they also want to understand that, that how they want to manage eventually, right? because these two things even influences the, the way the management structure has been deployed into the enterprise, right? So, Let's take an example of a super store, super bazaar, right? How a super bazaar or a retail super bazaar, I would say, is successful by making profits, right? It is very critical for their success is that they sell as much as they can. <laughs> they run offers though for customer success, but they should make a lot of sales, right? Now, what is the out, the goal for the the employees of that super store right now? that the goal of the superstore employees is that they achieve the sales or they deliver the sales or this achieve the sales target, right? I'm just trying to create a simple example here. And then the management or the structure of the management is like, you know, if you are familiar with the retail stores, they're primarily, uh, you know, driven with the day-to-day -day, uh, discussion or you can say the day log or the punching, what they call is daily punching, right? If you're familiar with, loan departments in bank they call it daily punch how many customers we have punched today or maybe we have any customers in the end of the day we have logged in into a crm system or some system like that so eventually the management processes are typically devised based on their business goal uh, you know influencing the whole ecosystem right so they have their stand-ups obviously they talk a lot about that they have a lot of peer work which they do pair work as well not just the peer work i'm sorry the pair work so they couple uh, the, the pair with a with a couple of people those are more smes in the domain and then that is how they actually try to convert the things into the, the opportunity into the success again right so the whole ecosystem when i say management or the way that evidence based management operates there in that case is like you know you have daily sales or a monthly sales target achieved that evidence acts as a future of your enterprise okay so uh sorry it, it, it acts as a, as a support system or as a guiding principle for your enterprise right so it helps you to build from there where are you right so when you look at the financial times everybody talks about quarterly uh you know business goals achievements or maybe the targets achieved or not like as all these corporates right so that's nothing but the evidence-based management only eventually they collect the outcome or the, the revenues revenue is another way to look at it but then they eventually see that that how it has been achieved and then their management structure the way they want to manage it is a 
primarily driven with those facts okay now how human you can be <laughs> with this approach is up to you right you know and then good human uh, centric practices comes in the picture right now how you want to incentivize people how the work life balance would be all these concepts comes in along with that whereas still if you see some places they might be uh, some some domains and some industries that might be lacking overall so simple is that if you are running a company which is of our size which is a small size company i would say the first thing is like you know you want to always look at the outcome what is the monthly outcome like have we delivered let's say 10 things which we thought could contribute to our success and if we collect that as an evidence and we want to manage it further and then we make a pattern like you know three months of the evidence is right or you can say the the data collection and then we say that okay this is how we have progressed or we are not progressing so it's just like a linear but zero degree curve or is this linear or maybe maybe exponential or whichever way it is looking at you so you always want to collect that information and then you want to structure uh, the support systems which is what we call as management frameworks and you want to apply the economy of scale if you have more people getting engaged into the whole system you want to actually apply uh, the governance that there is a pattern of the same thing getting done by different people right so the processes gets the birth over there right as you can relate to maybe my examples right so that's what my view about this idea um simply putting it into a main conclusion mark is all what matters is like you know an evidence based management if you want that you can apply metrics i think couple of metrics which matters a lot one are i just said tangible non tangible but i would say number is one of the very important aspects like you know you want to convert it into number at the very end it's not like you want to be with this in a happy uh, feedback from the customer without numbers is, is of any meaning most of the time it makes some sense but it cannot be uh, it cannot help you further so much okay, it can't help you much so it can help but not that the way we want to see so simply the thing is again in the perspective way is like if you are running evidence based management system you need to always understand for success for the enterprise organization or the team you have and what are the metrics you want to apply there and then how do you want to collect it right and then very candidately you need to distinguish between the fake metrics and the real one the fake metrics like you know it might be noting down like number of items planned versus number of items delivered it doesn't make any sense right number of uh, x size of item multiplied by x size and then how many of that Bring the size of the versus actual. What matters is into the evidence base. These are also evidences, right? It's just like you know, if you if a person has fever and we are taking the DNA samples, right? It's not gonna solve the problem immediately. But then obviously, maybe longer run, you might have some research done with that, and then you can come up with a very great solution. But right now, the problem is what metrics you want to collect is is is. about how the success is is defined with that in evidence based management so if the management construct is is used as an as an idea as a framework your ideology is to revolve around like you know what evidence what data you want to collect eventually okay so over to you prashant again for your views uh, thank you prayag i think you summed up and the examples you gave the last point which you mentioned uh, is correct when you have fever check the temperature first not the dna the metric the metric should make uh, sense to the customer and the user also as well as the service provider so i think thank you for sharing your views and i will let you take over the next topic too fantastic so maybe we can begin again from the uh, the next topic is from noopur what is the future of agile so <laughs> i'm not a future teller but definitely you want to hear noopur what is your thoughts right now how do you see it and then what do you want to hear <laughs> so uh, my que- question or the topic suggestion is based on couple of things priyank uh, uh, first thing is uh, uh, we have i think most of us have uh, uh, learned about once dave thomas said agile is dead in one of his talks uh, that's uh, that made quite around around the agile community second is uh, uh, when i was interviewing james greening in one of my series Uh, i asked him um, that while you were uh, 
writing the agile manifesto did you uh, guys think that it will go beyond it uh, industry and it will reach hr and uh, other other uh, domains and people will be implementing there so he said no while we were um, working on it we didn't even have uh, a clue that it will become so popular uh so this is the tech, second thought uh, on the topic suggestion uh that it was invented it it became quite popular and then we have an example like prince 2 i myself have done a certification on prince 2 but i've never used it uh, anywhere so prince 2 was a thing at once uh, so is is agile has something similar lied in future for itself uh is is my question is it going to stay for longer what is the future looks like or uh, it's going to fade away is it going to change its shape or the way it is implemented uh, so i was quite curious because i was uh, as the references i've shared with you so good in my opinion and in my observations and i have some understanding but then i can't be 100% correct with my future telling you the future of agile i would say future of good things is going to be good always right so agile has been narrated in a way nowadays which is like every good thing is agile right so and i believe we all understand what i'm saying especially we talk about hr should be agile finance should be agile it to be agile operations to be agile and you know what not right so everybody initially when we look at the industry or a enterprise as a construct we was trying to do that uh, to be agile right and maybe you can say like you know the agile was in need of the hour that point in time to revolutionary or you can say as in disruption or address the disruption whichever way you want to say like so we wanted to address a need that point in time that wherever we are we want to be better than that good things should help us to be better and then we assembled those ideas and then as as been into the industry for a while now i have seen both the previous two decades and i have seen and observed that that initially it was all about struggling to get rid of that what we traditionally were doing i would say traditional was the management techniques and the tools and processes and the models available then we got this one in the first decade and then now we are again in a in a in a way we can say it's continuous uh, you know journey or you can say revolution is is always going on so whatever we have today most likely we will not see it tomorrow whatever it is like you know so is the structure of the organization is is going to be like that tomorrow maybe not because that's not what is we need in future maybe the way the business models are going to be like that maybe not because the new business model has to be devised which we don't even know the the, the way the markets are being uh, seen to will not be there okay i was just listening to you to badri and other people who spoke before me and at the time from the time the three was talking or maybe someone was talking about like you know the, the financials the big giants the banks <clears throat> who has thought many years before the post office would be in the shape where they are today right they do a significant value addition to the world but as a person how many times you really visit a post office today in a year in fact maybe hardly once maybe that too is just for some very critical thing which nobody else can do and that is why you want to be there okay <clears throat> the point which is i'm trying to make is maybe down the line say 20 30 years from now there won't be a bank or either the bank would be in the same shape that there won't be anyone visiting a bank right so the bank what we call as bank as in premises today will not be required and it will become you know uh, uh, you know just like a post office okay so what is my intention to tell you that is that the industry itself the domains which we think traditionally will take a linear curve when the disruptions will actually come and they will also you know transform i would say they will fail in fact in more in numbers to transform digitally and and you know as in software uh, enabled digital systems versus they will succeed so what will happen eventually is the new systems will replace them the 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 future of agile will be in that particular uh, revolutionary moment like so if you look at today and like 10 years down the line <clears throat> change would be there whatever is happening people will be attempting to change it through disruptions through innovations to transformations right 
and these three things will remain consistent and then everything good what helps you to do innovation everything good which helps you to do transformation and you know <clears throat> survivability is another construct which we talk a lot about and you know become resilient as an enterprise all that constructs will be there but uh, the frameworks or the way we see it today like you know the way we operating today and the way we operate tomorrow might change drastically so in my opinion <clears throat> uh the good the best practices will remain a bit relevant but there would be uh, a lot of new stuff coming in i'm not talking about frameworks as been inventions and uh, can be invented and can be introduced more about like the way the things happens today will be changed. like one simple example today would be <clears throat> which is because of the corona and the online work from home culture is uh, nobody ever talked about that in in that detail about self managing self directed contributors like in past right so we talked about self managing teams but we never stressed out a term called self managing individual today it's about self directed self managing individual so the last two years in my personal opinion <clears throat> are been dominated by the companies uh, who have i mean like who has made the progress is is the companies which have you know very progressive forward looking people which are the right people they should they have invented things companies have introduced solutions right you know there are companies that have introduced very unique solution in covid time and, and that was pretty much self governed uh, you know um, individuals and individuals forming a team eventually has created that right it's not like that they were like self directed or self organizing team self managing team they were primarily uh, people <laughs> who came together to the to lead with the purpose and eventually delivered it with that so that's my opinion so the future is agile in my opinion obviously agile word itself might transform like and a lot of people started talking about agility a lot of people don't use that agile alone now and they say agility is more important right? things like that business agility transformation organization agility a lot of new words have been coined but the intent remains same right we want to change we want to be better we want to be progressive we want to be we want to grow as an industry so in in that context all these ideas which are brilliant ideas will remain relevant okay we not completely go away from this so this is my opinion so good to hear that question from you you have any views to add in that itself nupur or prashant or anyone on call like monica or anyone who has interest in sharing that So thanks for covering it in detail, Priyanka. I think you have summed it up very nicely. Uh, the intent will not change, and I agree to it. And I believe, uh, though I myself have asked the question, but uh, while answer, uh, listening to your answer, I, I believe that uh, agile in itself is agile, so it can accommodate with AI or ML. If I mean the collaboration power of the agile uh, practices is a lot. so the new methodologies or the practices that are being introduced can be work together with what we call agile right now maybe no but i think when i learned this again i will like to highlight like you know we were like very busy rewriting a lot of document very processes and we want to get away from them right those mm -hmm. uh, processes so we devised it on the run most of the people have this uh, agile so called agile ways of working <clears throat> got introduced to get away from something which is already problematic at the other side like in a lot of uh, great successful in fact uh, you know frameworks and agile frameworks per se are introduced in like like years but they actually are making the things more complex so when i look at the situation like you know when i look at a framework today most of those in fact actually creating a lot of they are heavy in information again so they eventually uh, are not called processes but they resonate a complex uh, as a complexity as the process had right so uh, they are not processes they are not like the 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 governance models which we used to have in past so in my opinion these frameworks have to become simplified again and they will become then relevant obviously 
but uh, yes as you correctly said it may be a lot of things which will remain relevant in my opinion as well and uh, a lot of new things will be devised right you know every day when we see, like you know self organizing self managing self directed things are get, the, these are also becoming frameworks now like you know people are introducing frameworks on these lines now that how not just that work from home and you know remote working people also are talking more about like how individual contributions can make it big right so agile was no matter what it was like you know small or big team it was always a team thing and now people are talking about individuals contribution making big which is a different perspective right so people have seen the power individuals can create now and then if i say agile it's just a mindset for them then so the mindset will remain very very relevant in terms of agile but then when it comes to futuristic frameworks and you know the methodologies will evolve i don't know the future how does it looks like like a lot of people saying this and some people are saying another side so but then obviously prashant gulwadi has some thoughts again saying so prashant over to you now you appeared and then disappeared i was uh, thinking this way uh, uh, nupur agile is a mindset so if i try catching a fly right is always uh, not possible unless i use a spray of a hit so being agile in the mind will be there how am i becoming more agile tomorrow that uh, will change earlier we were looking at output oriented not talking outcomes oriented from like priya mentioned from teams to individuals the philosophy is what agile trying to portray over there all along uh, how can we become more i would say scientific in the way we address the agile way of working so miss today which we have that no documentation in agile those miss become more clearer those i think those processes will become more mature the way i see that with ai ml deep learning maybe the way we learn something or deliver something will definitely change and um, basic concepts still the same you are writing code and delivering a product or a service can i do it better every time better and better that will always keep our on our toes and i am no uh, crystal ball gazer here uh, i see that uh, the way i was thinking 10 years back definitely changed today and i need to reinvent myself for what my father taught me i need to talk differently with my child now how they talk to their children will always be different because generations are changing the expectations are changing so how can i deliver better constantly is the uh, mantra for me that's a good one just to build on prashant sir because it invoked my thought in a way so prashant used the term like you know how the new technology stake will actually do things for us basically it will simplify the things for us so we are all seeking simple solution so management is one dimension technology is another one like strategy or maybe leadership is another one if i say leadership falls in between management and strategy per se but so the three dimensions like you know i personally also feel that that the the way the frameworks as i said earlier and now prashant talking about so technology is becoming simpler likewise leadership and strategy will become further simpler however it would be uh, just like you know if you look at strategy or the the leadership things today right whatever it is right so it looks sometimes very complex like you know this way or that i think it should become very transparent very black and white in future to guide the people and and just like that if you look at the technology the way that that is growing it is actually making the things simpler for people not complex for the people so it is initially difficult to learn now but then over the time it will become it will solve a bigger problem because it, it's it's that way the intention is that way likewise the strategy and the leadership should be like very simplified way of doing things so back to you know to add your thoughts in in case if you have else we can take up the next question uh, i think we have covered it broadly priyank and prashant uh, and we can move on to the next topic uh, shared by molika uh, we have 12 minutes in hand so we can see if we can cover that uh so she asked I so why we use super agile why not linear or even or uh, even odd i think uh, uh, you know the if you read the references uh, you will see that uh, fibonacci series was introduced to use in estimation actually so it was used to show the inherent uncertainty with the big numbers 
and that is the fundamental reason we have used that okay uh, why not the other one i believe that is the reason that you want to actually showcase the current aspect it's a linear number it grows linearly which is not the reality of the work which we commence so if you if you have a feature here and another feature there maybe not the other feature is linearly or correlated to the in a linear way to the previous one it can be anything and that is the whole point like so it could be not necessarily in a multiplication of it it could uh, in a simple linear terms but it could actually exponentially also can be uh, uh, you know related to that so that exponential on text of feature versus feature or work versus work was not available as an option in the linear uh, way of doing the same thing versus any other way so to in, to showcase inherent uncertainty in world or inherent uh, you know uh, exponential uncertainty exponential exists the uncertainty so you don't you're not having the clarity about it and that is the way it is to be seen so uh, many other things maybe you'd like to add something here i think you summed it up nicely priya when we are estimating using fibonacci we are differentiating the size and the complexity so when i say 8 and 13 the argument of saying i was 9 and you said 8 gets eliminated because uh, the difference between estimating an 8 story point with a 9 story point is just a matter of uh, the way you see or way i see but when i say 8 and 13 or 13 the next one is whatever maybe 21 the huge gap definitely created so when you are looking at bucketing it and estimating the sizes the difference people understand and when i said a 13 versus 21 they do understand the complexity of doing a 21 story point versus a 13 story point the learning of doing 13 versus 15 may get lost and hence i think fibonacci sequence uh, was becoming uh, uh, is has become popular yeah fantastic in and uh, we to add it i just want to add in this uh, is this not like you know running a sprint of 10 meter 100 meters and then 200 meters which is a linear multiplication so the complexity was different right so one the terrain is different if you understand terrain so you might be on a flat ground versus you might be on an elevated one or maybe even on a jungle track or something like that and eventually it, though the distance might be same but the complexity is different which is present already highlighted okay so as you as you see that inherent characteristic of two different things have Uh, not a linear correlation was the whole intention of using fibonacci because it helps a lot in explaining that better so that's the way it is to be uh, yeah so i just got a comment here from rajesh alanki i'll read it out for everybody which is important it seems so i think as tech becomes simpler and more empowering the leadership becomes more complex because how do you motivate a self driven team the old method of stick and carrot won't work fear won't work it has to be a different thought process brilliantly quoted ajay it is going to be directly correlated to the growth right so look at the startup syndicates or like the people who are into startups and small size companies and the companies that are growing fast so the traditional uh, large scale companies are struggling to keep their people whereas these companies actually are attracting more talented people right what is their policy number one their policy number one is to engage the people directly into the revenue right so they give stocks they give the profit directly to the people and which is the same method through which the old companies have started like large companies have started but when they grow they start doing that because that's not possible you don't want to share that with a large number of people eventually the dividend will become very poor so they also have a core team they have the board they have the key stakeholders but then that's the initial set of the people or maybe the key people which they have onboarded on the run right so the model is known um but difficult or you can say challenging to implement and that is why i believe not everybody is picking it up imagine a team which is building up an e-commerce but they get paid to the revenue that e-commerce makes imagine that situation right it would be fantastic because uh, for the people because if the the product is developed technically correctly and now when you want to actually run the operation and then you improvise it continuously you make more money <laughs> and that's how it is if it is the case then it is the entrepreneurship mindset but the companies don't want to run that right now but if you go deep into the studies you will also understand that 
that this is the need of the hour. In many cases, you need to have an ecosystem which can compensate people and engage them into the growth directly. So there's a correlation that I grow along with the company's growth. And then once that is done, then the success would be different. So that carrot and stick is not an option. The direct engagement or the core, direct, uh, you know, uh, bottom line centric uh, or maybe top line centric approaches will help a lot in terms of the growth of the enterprise, in my opinion. Uh, just a quick announcement about conclusion and then maybe you can, we can wrap it up. So. Uh, thank you for participating in this open space and uh, I really appreciate your contributions. We look forward for you people to help us grow this community. So if you think that you want to be a speaker or a panelist or a volunteer or a moderator or any role which you think that this community offers attracts you, you're welcome to join and set up a conversation with us and then we can take the matter forward from there. Okay, so thank you and back to you Nisha now. Thank you, Priyank, and thank you, Prashant and Anupur. It was a wonderful open space.